um, welcome to my video. In this video I'm going to be um, explaining and showing how I created my logo, uh, not how it was designed or um, drawn up, but rather how it was animated. Um, so basically it's just a video on how I created my ident and it might be helpful for you to see as well. Um, so I created this in Adobe Premiere Pro um, 2015 version. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to run you through it again. So you want to import your media first of all. Um, in this case, it's the logo. So here it is. This is the one I used. Uh, white logo, big. It's a Photoshop file and 5.9 meg and it's a big one. It's full frame uh, HD kind of size. I don't know if that makes sense. It, I, I, it makes sense to me what I said. It's, it needs to be that kind of resolution in order to look good when blown up big on a full screen. Um, so go do that. That was just asking whether I wanted to merge both parts of my logo together, which I do, and I thought was already the case, but obviously not. Anyway, um, so this is it here. This is our timeline. When you press play, you can see nothing happens because it hasn't been animated yet. Um, it's got a five second long duration at the moment, which can be made longer or cut shorter, depending on how long you want it. So let's just go around the six second mark, just because that's ideally how long I want my ident to be anyway. So once you've done that, we need to start animating. Um, it might not look like this instantly when you open up, it might have all panels selected. So what you want to do is make sure you go into editing and then over to effect controls. So when you're on effect controls, you're going to click the drop down button on motion. Now this is going to show us all of our variables um, and all the things we can change. So uh, we've got a position which you can scroll up and down, um, our scale again, make it small and big, whoa. Um, ro uh, rotation, uh, anchor point, that's wh which part of the image you want it to rotate around so you can make it not necessarily rotate around the middle but around an angle but I don't see much need for that seeing as it's a very symmetrical kind of design and any rotation will be quite minimal. Um, so to start it off what you want to do is well the first thing I'm going to do is scale it down because I want it to pop out, I want it to zoom and increase in size so I'm going to put it all the way down to naught and click the toggle animation button, this little stopwatch there. Um, and so then what you do is drag along to when you're happy. So if you bear in mind this is the five second mark, uh, this will probably be well, obviously two and a half seconds, just say let's go about around one second at the moment. You then want to kind of increase it to the size you want. Um, I'm gonna go about say 90, actually yeah like 92 a little bit bigger than I want and I'll explain why I did that in a second and just by adjusting that variable you've inserted the next keyframe so when you watch back it increases obviously I want it a bit quicker than that so you can just drag the previous key keyframe you just made and it does it a little bit quicker I still want it quicker than that so I still so that's about the kind of speed I want I'm not, this is only just going to be one for demonstration so I'm not going to like fine tune it too much. So anyway, oh, also you can use this to zoom in, just scroll left and right and it just helps. So I've got those two and yeah, it's okay. It, it does what I want it to do, but it's not very lifelike. It's just a bit static. So what you can do is click on the first keyframe, um, right click, and then on these we have um, ways of basically altering the tween animation, uh, tweens basically, it, cut, it just cuts down every individual frame from point A to point B and plays them in an order. So by clicking ease out it just alters um, like how spaced together certain frames are so it looks as if, if we go along frame by frame you can see it start, they start to get smaller towards the end whereas at the start they're more drastic which leads to a bit more of a a little bit more of a pop on it, which looks better, but to make even better, what I normally do is this keyframe, we made it bigger intentionally because we're now going to shrink it straight back down, like say two frames afterwards. So back down maybe to like 
know, 8, 85, maybe that's too much. 87, we'll try that first of all. And now it has a bit of bounce at the end. Boing. And let me just play around. It's, it's, a lot of it is just feeling it and trying to get it exactly how you want. Maybe it could do with being a bit bigger on that first initial one. I don't know whether it is. Big enough. Um, let's just increase it a little bit more. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Oh, I've just made a new keyframe. I didn't want to do that actually. I wanted to alter that one. It seems like I'm incapable of doing that. Well, maybe if I decrease the size of this one, it'll do the same kind of effect. Yeah, mm, no, that looks... Oh, God. What are you doing? Let's just make that bigger like I wanted it to. Okay, I know I've done the same thing again, but you know what? It looks alright. And when I did it initially, it didn't do this, I swear, I promise. So anyway, that's that. That's the first part. It's pretty good. I'm relatively happy with it. Um, for the end, I kind of want to have the same effect, but going backwards. So this is the part where you've got to kind of, kind of estimate how long you want to leave it before you get rid of it again. And when I was doing this before, I made it far too short because I'd been looking at it so much and thought, right, that's enough, <laughs> like instantly. So that's the first part. I'd say maybe like, maybe around four seconds, maybe four and a half seconds would be all right. Um, so what we're going to do on here again is add another keyframe, uh, but I kind of want it to have a slow grow over this whole, you know, three second duration. So at the moment it's on size 87, but I'm so I'm gonna just increase that a little bit more, create a new keyframe to about 90. So now when over the course of it it will zoom in a little bit more. It, and that is again just to kind of draw the eye to it and to kind of make it more involving when watching it. So at this point I'm gonna have it do the same kind of thing. Let's just zoom in on this. The same kind of thing where it will essentially get bigger for a second before then shrinking down. Um, so what we want to do is a similar kind of thing. A few frames on initially, get bigger. Maybe like a bit more of a drastic one now, seeing as we get, it's like the final bit. Think of like a Bugs Bunny, kind of Hanna-Barbera kind of cartoon with the uh, title slate. That's very poppy and lifelike. Right, okay, so, and then instantly afterwards back down to small. Um, okay, so yeah, just to go away. Let's have a look at that. Those, no, that's far too quick. Way too quick. What was I thinking? Mm, way too slow. So, a lot of it is just kind of watching it and kind of getting a feel for it. And you can do a similar kind of thing. Do an ease out, and that will again kind of make it a little more human like. If a logo can be human like that is. Okay, I'm, I'm not overly happy with it, but it, it will do for the moment. And just one final thing I'm going to do to this is add a rotation on the end as well. So, again, when you want to start doing a. Uh, a new kind of, what should I call it, um, I don't know, variable, that's it, that's kind of the word I was looking for. You need to create a keyframe, but we can just create the last keyframe for a rotation, because otherwise it's going to do a big, long, slow rotation throughout the animation, so let's pop it in there where we want it to start. There we go, there's our first one, and then over the end, we now choose how much we want to do, so, I don't know, we'll, we'll We'll try 60 degrees initially. It's okay. Um, maybe a little bit more, actually. No. Okay, so look at that. 
don't know if it goes big enough on this part here, actually. Um, it might do. I might just be going, being silly. Yeah, okay. I'm quite happy with that. Um, again, we can do another ease out on the rotation, uh, which will, again, kind of speed it up as we go through each frame. So there we go. So it like starts off quite slow and then ends up being quite quick. Cool. Alright, okay, I'm quite happy with that. Um, so let's just watch it back all together. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty good. Um, so if you want to do this for a different logo as well, you could select all of this here, Command C, and then you can copy and paste it again straight after. So you could just copy it, whack in a different photo variable of the photo. Like, for example, I've got a black one and then just paste in the same animation um, kind of properties. So I'm gonna just cut this down to more suitable size. Yeah, cool. All right, so brilliant. Now to export, very simple. All you gotta do, just make sure you've selected the uh, video track. Track, so I don't know what that was called. Vi just make sure you've selected it. Oh, saved it. Um, export media and there's three ways of exporting this because I don't I don't think I mentioned but this has actually got a transparent background but in Premiere Pro it appears with a black background um, but if you don't export it in the right way it will export with the black background which is what we don't want so uh, let's think so we want a QuickTime format that's fine. Um, and then so what you want to do is change the codec because oh, what have I just done? No. Oh okay, here we go. Right, so yeah, we want to change the codec. So there's three you can choose from. You can choose animation, which compresses it down um, a bit, uh, but you get a better file size. Um, none, which doesn't compress it down at all, and I find always creates a huge file size. Or you can have a PNG, um, which compresses quite a lot. So I like to mediate and just go with animation, go directly in the middle. Um, video quality, bump it up as much as you want. You want to not keep changing things like I am by mistake. Um, the bit depth. 8, 16, 24, 32, go 32, add, just adds clarity to the animation. Um, width and height, so your source is the square, your output is a rectangle. Because that is just the size of the file and that's the video output, I'm happy with that. That's what I want it to look like over the, um, over the video I'm going to be using it on. So that should be all fine. Oh, make sure you change your output here as well, so you can choose where you save it. So, uh, logo, um, white, ident. Okay, um, I'm just going to put in brackets for video, because this is just a rough one, and I want to be able to distinguish it from the one I've done before, which I'm actually a lot more happy with. <laughs> so you save that, and then click export. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, and then when it's exported, it should be all good to go. So you can layer it on top of other videos, and it will appear transparent. So let's have a look. Choose logo for video. Open it up. In fact, that's not going to be a good representation because it's going to be on a black background. I've just thought. Okay, never mind. Let's not do that. I will put it up in front of the video so you will see what it looks like. So yeah, this has just been my video on how I've basically created that. Um, brilliant. Okay. Bye. See you later. Cheers. Bye.